Welcome to Cloud 941, the only live television show on Sarasota politics and issues. And I'm the host, Ron Filipkowski, and we are just about winding things down here. We got a couple more weeks, but we got some good shows for you left before we go on our hiatus. Um, tonight's guest is the first candidate to enter the judicial races for 2010 and officially file for those races, Tracy Lee. Tracy is our guest tonight, and he's an attorney from Sarasota. Welcome to the show, Tracy. Ron, thanks for having me on. All right. Nice tie, by the way. Uh, yeah, we didn't uh, intend to match ties, but unfortunately we have exactly the same tie. Tracy likes to, you know, copy what I do, so. <laughs> Trying to keep up with the best, what can I say? <laughs> All right. Tracy, why don't you tell us, uh, tell us about your family background. How about that? Tell you what, I know it feels like now to sit on a witness stand sitting here not knowing what you're going to say. <laughs> um, my family, I'm married to a wonderful na lady named Alex. And uh, we have a beautiful little girl named Emmeline. She's two years old. She means everything in the world to me. Uh, I was born and raised here. My parents uh, have lived here most of their lives. I stick in Marilyn Lee. My father is a prominent attorney. My mother is the chairman of Sarasota uh, Memorial Hospital. My older brother Jeff is in construction. My younger brother John is a stockbroker here. They were both uh, local high school stars. Um, my younger sister Kathy is married to Jason Neubauer, and they have two little boys. So the whole family has been part of Sarasota, and we love it here. What about uh, the steps that you took to become an attorney? Where did you go to school? I went to school, started out at University of Florida, and after I graduated, I... Uh, did you graduate from high school here? I went well, high school? Of course. I went to Sarasota High School. I was raised okay. here. went all the way through, you know, Southside Elementary School, Sarasota Middle, Sarasota High School, everything from Little League all the way up through. Okay. So you're pretty, you're, you and your family are pretty entrenched in the community. Um, I know uh, I've seen you at different events and people always ask you about your mom. How's your mom doing? Uh, she seemed to be a pretty popular person in the community. What, do, you, do you get that from people when you talk to them? My mom's a hard person not to like. She's always just very considerate and caring about other people and trying to do what's best for everyone. And hopefully I've absorbed some of that. Uh, she's just a wonderful lady, really bright, and it's a privilege to be able to call her mom. And your dad is a, a well-known, you know, very famous attorney from Sarasota, Dick Lee. Uh, when you became an attorney, when you first started, did you get a lot of questions uh, about him, or what was it like to kind of become, <laughs> take up the same profession as your dad? Anyone that knows my dad knows he's a very large personality and, you know, takes up uh, the room when he walks in. He's an extremely well-known person, brilliant legal mind. and. It was always something that fascinated me as a child just to watch how he took care of his clients and protected people and it was something I aspired to be. It wasn't until I had my first clerk job, uh, I was clerking for a federal judge in New York where I thought maybe I would like to do something different other than just practice law. That's why I'm here today. Tell us about your career as an attorney, how long you've been an attorney and what you've done. Well, I graduated from 1994, I went to a school called, called Widener. And I came back and I started working in my dad's firm. I stayed with him for three years. Then I decided I wanted to get some trial experience. So I took a position with Elliot Metcalf at the Public Defender's Office and did that for three years. Did it long enough to where he sent me out to DeSoto County where I was the head, well, head division head for the DeSoto County Office where I was in charge of felonies, misdemeanors, and juvenile. So I had the whole office that I was running. Um, after that, I decided I wanted to go into private practice. I opened my own firm. I did that for a few years. Then I joined uh, Gary Jodat's firm, Jodat Law Group, well, with offices in Venice, Sarasota, and Bradenton. Uh, I ran his litigation office for several years, and then I wanted to do something on the other side. I got the opportunity to prosecute child abuse cases for Attorney General Charlie Chris, and then later uh, Attorney General Bill McCollum. So I was able to do that. And then I decided to go back to private practice, so I'm back working with the Jodat Law Group again now. You were an, uh, an assistant attorney general when you did the child abuse cases? Senior assistant attorney general. That just means you've been practicing for more than five years when you take the job. So, um, that my must job have been was an interesting position. Interesting is probably not the best word because you're dealing with, with children that have been through the most horrible things you can imagine. Things I wouldn't want to talk about in, in public that you that you see every day. But it feels really good to be able to know that you've protected a child, made sure that child's going to wake up in a safe home and, and not be abused anymore. Okay, before we talk more about your sort of legal career in the law, I, I want to ask you what's called cloud soul-searching questions, okay? <laughs> we ask sort of every candidate who files to run has to run this gamut of questions, okay? 
Why don't you tell us about uh, a famous person, a historical figure that you admire and why? Historical figure. Oliver Wendell Holmes is a Supreme Court Justice, he was a Chief Supreme Court Justice. And it was the most important thing to him, he became well known for um, making sure that he followed the law. There's a lot of judges that legislate from the bench. If you do that, you unravel the whole core of what our, our country is based on with a three-tier system. If judges are legislating, they're not following the law, they're making the law. A judge's job is to take what the legislation has passed and apply that law. Because he was the first justice that I know of that really stood for that, it, he's the person I most admire. What about a hobby or interest you have on the side that has nothing to do with the law that might interest people or surprise people? Um, I'm into horses. I, when I was in law school, people pretty much stuck to studying, and after a while I needed something else to do, so I started writing, and I found out that I had a natural gift for it. And as I came back here, uh, my family has a cattle ranch and had some room, and I started raising horses, and I learned that I have a, a gift where I can gentle almost any animal. So if someone came to me with a horse that was wild and unruly, if you just gave me about 30 minutes, I could tame that animal and pretty much have it be able to follow me around and do things like that. People should hang out with horses a little bit more often. <laughs> they, they really, res if you have sh respect and show authority, they will do really whatever you want. They're amazing animals. It's somewhat, somewhat similar to what you need to have in court. You, you certainly can't be just authoritative in the courtroom. As long as you show people respect, then everything works the way it should. And that's something, hopefully, that that hobby will be able to bring into the courtroom. You own horses to this day? I'm down from 25 to 5. 25? Yeah, wow. I uh, was breeding championship horses. I had a world champion stallion and uh, traveled all over the country showing horses. But when I met my wife and she got pregnant, it was uh, really choosing between the horses and spending time with my baby. And there's nothing better than spending time with my horses. baby. So okay. I'm down to 5, and that's about as small as my horse habit can get. What about music? What kind of music do you like? What's, music. what's your favorite band? Well, I grew up here, so it's a mix of country and reggae, I suppose. So if I had to pick a concert I'd go to, I guess a Jimmy Buffett concert would be about as good as any. Okay. You might not want to go there as a judge, though. You know, you might have to put a <laughs> few people in jail for, for some of the things that are going on there, but uh, <laughs> but that's a good choice. Uh, how about uh, you grew up in Sarasota, you lived here your whole life. What about f a favorite restaurant? you have a place you go to go you like to eat around town? Well, I suppose it depends on what you're asking. If it's anniversary night, I'd go to Michael's on East. It's a great restaurant and treats you really well. Um, just a regular night, I'd go to Pacific Rim. Vet owns the restaurant. It's a friend of mine. Really good food. But if I got to pick, probably Daiquiri Deck or Sharky's on the pier. I'm, I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy, so if I got to pick, I'd go out and see the ocean. All right. Well, that, yeah, I think you've uh, pretty much run the gamut. Let me ask you one more. How about your all-time favorite movie? Movie? Well, I'd probably pick one of two. The movie Fireproof is a movie that's designed to help strengthen your marriage, and it has a book that goes along with it. It's a 40-day program called The Love Dare. That's something my wife and I did, and it really was a way to help make a good marriage better, so it was something that really meant a lot to me as far as a movie. But it was just watching the movie, it would be Seabiscuit, uh, just because of the horse stuff. I mean, okay. I, I can watch that movie a hundred times, and it wasn't exactly historically accurate, but it's a good movie, and it's really neat to see what they did with a, with a really good horse. All right, it's time for our first break. When we come back, we'll have more with county judge candidate Tracy Lee. Thanks for 